good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it's, it's kind of funny, you know, it goes along with some of the messages from the revival. And uh, then it kind of recaps some of the things that we went over in 9. So Paul in chapter 10 is it's kind of just, he's preaching on on backslidden people, really. You know, and, and the church of today really needs to hear that message. Because there's so many people coming to church that are living their, life, their lives in a backslidden state. And think it's okay to live that way. You know, and it's not. It's not. You know, the Lord is just pleased with that kind of lifestyle when we say that we're something. And we're not. Amen. Amen. And then, you know, that infiltrates the church. And the church doesn't have power anymore because God isn't going to dwell where things are unholy. Amen. Amen. So chapter 10, and we'll just jump right in. And we hope we'll get a couple more, you know, tonight. If not, I'll go ahead and lock the door. All right, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. Now, Paul is talking to the Corinthians, and right here he says he says this, that they shouldn't be ignorant. All right, now, in Corinth, in Corinth, these people, these Christians, these converts, they were living that lifestyle. They thought that just because they were saved, they had been baptized, and they were living, you know, and, and participating with the church of God, amen, that... They couldn't lose their salvation. So they were doing things. And Paul is like, look, I don't want you to be ignorant thinking that this is okay. In other words, look, I'm about to tell you what you're doing that's not okay in the sight of God. Because it doesn't have nothing to do with Paul's opinion. you know. And, and in churches today, everybody's got an opinion. right? And I'm going to tell you right now, my opinion, it don't matter. Okay, the pastor's opinion, it doesn't matter. Your opinion tonight really doesn't matter. What matters is what the Word of God says. Amen. Amen. So when we think a certain way or a certain thing is okay, we need to get in the Word, and we need to check it. And if it's not line, lining up with His Word, we need to get it under the blood. Amen. So he's telling them, he's like, look, I don't want y'all to be ignorant in certain things because you're attached to the church. And when we're attached to the church and we walk around thinking that we're no, we know something and really we ain't got a clue, Amen. it makes the church look bad, Amen. right? Amen. It makes us look ignorant. Have you ever seen a person that thought they knew it all Amen. but really didn't know nothing? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, I've seen a couple people like that in my life. I've been one of those people. Amen. Walking around, thank God I done, I done arrived, and I didn't know a thing. Amen. Amen. And a lot of times we get like that. So that's what Paul is trying to, he's trying to, look, y'all, put your attention here. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So Paul's going back and he's going to use the things that happened in the wilderness on the way to Canaan's land, amen, as a example. It says, they all were under the cloud, they all passed through the sea, they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all was under the presence of God. They had seen the presence of God. They had felt the presence of God. Amen. They had seen it. They had felt it. And it says that they was baptized in it. And they passed through the sea, the Red Sea, with the presence of God. And that takes us back to our message in revival. You know, we, we talked about the presence of God and how we're supposed to follow after it. Well, these people, they seen it and they followed it. And it says... And did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did all drink the same spiritual drink? See, they were all Israelites. They were all God's people. Amen? Come on, y'all help me teach you Amen. tonight. And they were supposed to partake of all the same things. 
They were supposed to be doing all the same things. They they ate of the they ate of the manna. Amen. They drank of the water that came out of the rock. Us as a church, we're supposed to all be doing the same things. Amen. We're supposed to be seeking after God in His presence. We're supposed to be living under the cloud. We're supposed to follow His presence through the sea, through any trial, through any temptation, anything that goes on in our lives. We're supposed to put God first and not be ignorant in things that we think is okay, but walk unto God and with His Word. Amen? Amen. And there's so many divisions. Come on, y'all. There's so many divisions in the church about certain things, right? Amen. And, you know, here in this church, it wasn't supposed to be that. That's why Paul is preaching on all these different things to all these different letters to the different churches. He's like, look, you might be here and this church might be there, but we're supposed to all come together. Amen. We're all eating of the same thing. Amen. Amen. The bread of life, Jesus Christ. We're all eating of the same thing. We all have the same Savior. Amen. Amen. We all was born again by the same blood. So don't let these things come in and separate us. Amen. Amen. And the church and here in in the wilderness, they was being separated. Right? It says, For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Now, why does it bring that up? Because there was life in the water. Come on. Amen. Amen. There's life. You can't walk through the wilderness and through the desert and not have any water. So that's why they call the rock Jesus. Because he said that I got this water that if you drink of my water, you'll never thirst again. Come on. Amen. So in the wilderness, they drunk of this rock that Moses, remember he, he struck that rock and the water come out. And it, it, it was sufficient for all the people, the whole congregation. It was sufficient. His bread was sufficient for the whole entire nation of Israel, the whole multitude. The water that come out of the rock was sufficient for the whole multitude. So us as being the body of Christ, all together in the church, whether this church, that church, this church, we're supposed to be all together. Why? Because we're eating of the same meat. We're drinking of the same water. Amen? Amen. From Jesus Christ. And that's what brings us life. And that's what Paul's teaching them. He's like, look, we're all the same. We're all the same. Why are we being drawn away through different things? And why are all these divisions? And why are we thinking we're something when we're not in the church and thinking this is okay? How is it okay for you and not okay for me? Amen. Amen. And that's what he's getting into. He's just giving them an example. Amen. Amen. All right, look at five. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. For many of them, God was not well pleased. We, we have come to a place in America, in our, in our churches, that God is not pleased with a lot of his children. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because they're, they're claiming one thing and they're walking contrary to the word of God. Amen. Amen. And that's the truth. That's the truth of the matter. It's in every single church. Amen. I mean, it's in every single church. We've preached in a lot of churches. Amen. Amen. We've been to a lot of places, and we see the same things happening in all of the congregations, right? Amen. We've got those ones that just won't give up this and won't do that. And, and then we got the ones that come in and sow discord among the brethren, like we talked about the other night, right? Amen. It's just it's in every church, and God is not pleased with that. Amen. God's not pleased with that. He's not pleased when we, we're supposed to be his children. He has given us the meat, and he's given us the water, and we can't live like we're supposed to live when his, his blood is sufficient for us Amen. in this walk. Amen? It says they were overthrown in the wilderness. They were overtaken. They were not overcomers. They were overtaken by the lust, by the sin. Amen? And what did it result in? It resulted in death. That You could really put that word at overthrown as slain in the wilderness. Out of all the people in the wilderness for those 40 years, only two of the original people went into Canaan's land. 
two. And who was they? They was uh, Joseph, Joshua and Caleb. Caleb. Joseph, <laughs> listen to me. Amen. Joshua and Caleb out of a whole nation. Come on. We is all drinking the same thing. We is all eating on the same thing. The Lord rained it down out of heaven. The, the Lord give the water out of a rock. We've seen the miracles. We've been through, through the trenches all together. But only two people out of all of that went in. God says you're going to have to enter in through the straight gate. Amen. Amen. It said it'd be few that find it. So that tells me tonight that we're not going to come to church. We're not going to live our life any way we think we can live it. Amen. And still be saved. Amen. There is what you call a backslidden state. Amen. Amen. And if we feel like we have not been given it our all, if we feel distant from God, it's because we walked away. Amen. That's what happened here. And we're getting ready to get into that. It says, look at six. Now, these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they all lusted. So he's going to give us some examples here of what, what it means for back, to be backslidden. Amen? Amen? In the word of God, when these people lusted, it says that God rained the manna out of heaven, right? Amen. And they lusted for the things that was back in Egypt. In Exodus. Remember? It says, well, we had onions and we had this and we had that. We had cucumbers and we had all these different things back in Egypt. And now the Lord's done brought us out of Egypt and all we got is this manna to eat on. Come on. They ate the same thing for 40 years, y'all. Amen. The manna was rained down out of heaven for 40 years. God provided for them all that time and they were lusting after the old. Amen. Now us in church, we come in and God has blessed us. He's rained manna down in our lives. He has given us the bread of life. All we had to do was pick it up and take of it. Amen. But we're still lusting in our own hearts about the things that we used to have, what we used to do, how we used to live. Amen. Come on. A lot of people in the church is like that. You say, well, I'm not like that. Well, we all have those thoughts. I've had thoughts of things that I used to do, and, and they'll slowly try to creep their self back in. Amen? Amen? It says that when a house is is uh, renovated, come on, that those devils, they go out, and they come back after a while. Amen. See, Satan don't just leave you alone. The devil ain't going to leave you alone once you get yourself straight. Once you get yourself cleaned up, amen, once you've purged yourself of the sin, I want you to know that he's going to come back and he's going to knock on the door. Amen. He's not going to be by himself when he comes back. Amen. He's coming back with some more of them. Amen. And they're going to try to come in even harder, amen? That'd be seven times worse. Seven yeah. times worse, yeah. amen? He brings seven of his buddies with him. <laughs> and and that's what happened here. They was let, they They seen all the goodness of God. But they were still lusting for the same old things, and they hadn't had their hearts guarded. Nanny always told me to guard your testimony. Amen. Amen. Guard your heart, because there's ones out there trying to steal that from you. Amen. Amen. Tonight, we shouldn't lust after the evil things like they lusted. How come we can read about all these things that happened in the Bible, we see what happened. Nanny always said, if it happened in here, it'll happen in here. That's what she said. That's her famous saying, right? Well, it's true. We see what happened to these people, and we don't heed to it. We don't, we don't take it as an example. We just keep living our lives like we're ignorant to the Word of God. Amen? That's why we need revival. That's why we need preachers that will stand up and preach the truth. That's why we need Christians in the pew that will live a sanctified and a holy life, not being thrown this way and that way of every lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Come on. Amen. We need some true people. Look, it says, Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and to rose up to play. Now, in this portion of Scripture, he's talking about Moses. Moses went up on the mountain for 40 days, right? And 
God given the law. And what were the people doing? They was creating a golden calf. Moses up there communing with God. The, the fire done come down on the mountain in the cloud. They done seen the actual presence of God. God had spoke out loud. Amen. Amen. And here, because Moses tarried up there 40 days, they're down here eating and drinking and playing and have a good time, and they've, they've made an idol. And that's what the churches are doing. Amen? The churches are making idols today. We're making idols. We go to everything but God. God is our last resort. Amen. When he should be our first and main Amen. priority. Amen? Amen? We let things slip in. We let idols slip in. We don't pray like we should. We start off praying real real good and, and, and we start off seeking after the Lord and before you know it, your prayer time turns into TV time. Amen. 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 And then your Bible reading time comes into to scrolling on Facebook time or, or whatever it is that's taking the place of what you should be doing for God. Amen. Amen. You know, I'll give myself an example. I would go to work and I'm riding around dishing mail out the window. Well, I just listen to the radio, you know. I, I'll be honest with you. I was listening to country music. I won't, I was listening to country music, and I was riding around listening to the radio, throwing the mail out the window. What should have been? A, should have, I should have been preparing my soul in those times. Amen? Amen. So instead of listening to the radio now, I've been listening to preaching. Amen. Amen. I found a preaching thing on my phone. And I'll stick it up there and let them preach to me all day. And if I'm not listening to preaching, I'll listen to some gospel music. Amen. 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 Some old school, not Amen. none of the new yeah. stuff. I've been listening to some, it's 70s gospel music. And <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, them choirs get on there and it gets you fired up. Yeah. Amen. And, and it's what you put in is going to come out. Amen. And what you put in is going to bring life. So if I'm drinking of the life, water, the water of life, if I'm drinking Jesus, come on, come on. what's going to come out? Jesus. Amen? Amen? But if I'm taking all my time for God that I could be using for His glory and I'm using it in other ways, that's idolatry. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anything you put in the place of God is, is idolatry. I don't care if it's a, a TV show, a series on Netflix, whatever. I mean, your family... Come on, your church, all of that stuff. I mean, it can it can come in between you and God. Should nothing come in between your relationship with Jesus Christ? Amen. Not your mama, not your daddy, not your children, not your church. Come on, because we make church an idol. Not the preacher. You know, I want you to know that I'm nothing. I am nothing. Jesus Christ and his blood shed is what done it for me. Amen? And he'll do it for us. But we have to get that in our minds that we can't, turn away you know it's it was five major sins in this chapter that he's going to deal with it's lust adultery fornication tempting god and murmuring and if you look at the church today what's probably the most the biggest five in the church amen same thing lust adultery fornication tempting god and murmuring amen Let's move on a little bit. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Now what happened here in in the word, if you go back in Numbers and read it, they was taking wives from the Midianites. Amen? And they was taking wives and they was bringing that in their households. Come on. And their idol worship and their gods. And before you know it, they done started serving them. Amen? In fornication, and it was a lot of that in their worship. Amen? In the temple and everything. So when that happened, God got mad. And a plague come in on them. You don't believe me, you go read it for yourself. A plague come in, and it said it killed 20, in all it was 24,000 people. 24,000 people died because of fornication. Amen? And we see a lot of that in church. You know, it's not just in the pew, it's, it's in the altars. I mean, I, we can tell you time after time after time where preachers have left the pulpit and run away with certain women of the church or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Come on, y'all. Amen. Amen? We hear about song leaders, you know, 
stepping down and going to other places and it's fornication in the church. God's not pleased with the church when it's, it's spotted and blemished with sin. Amen. He's not happy with that. He's not happy when we're lusting after everything but God. Come on. Amen. He's not happy with that. He's not pleased with that. He, he, he sent judgment in on them people for that. Fornication was running rampant in, in Israel. In the wilderness, come on, this was in the wilderness when they was going in and they was taking over all these cities. They was taking them wives and God told them, he said, don't you do it. And what they do? They did it anyway in fornication. And guess what? The plague come on. Not only are we supposed to see this as an example of what not to do, but this is an example of what's going to happen if we do it. Because the penalty for sin is death. Amen. 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 Now, you know, it might not catch up with you tonight. It might not catch up with you tomorrow, but it's coming. Amen. Amen. Judgment's coming. Amen. Chastisement's coming. You know, I'd rather be chastised than judged. Come on, this is a strong point right here, y'all. The church needs chastisement. Amen. You know, when I acted up, my daddy, he'd take me out on the back porch and he'd belt me. Amen. He put the belt on my hind end. But you know what? I'm glad he did it. Because what if he would have come in and judged me and cast me away? You see what I'm saying? He was willing to correct me because he loved me so I could mold in to what I was supposed to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's what God needs to do in his church. He's going to have to chastise a few of us to mold us in to what we're supposed to be and get our minds back on him and stop walking around in ignorance thinking that we have something that we don't even have living in a backslidden state and don't have the power of God in our lives. Amen. 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 This is a hard thing to, to teach. I, I want y'all to know. Because I just want to, I just want to, you know. Hey, y'all. Backsliding. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. When he, did, when he sent them serpents out, they was doing the same thing. They was complaining about the manna, won't they? They was complaining about God's provisions. And it angered God. Amen? Amen. It angered him. It angered him. Complaining. And then look at this. It says, Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now, have you ever seen a complaining church member? Amen. Bet you, we ain't never seen none of them, have we? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, I was complaining earlier as soon as I got in the parking lot. My little boy, he had his pajamas on from where they had pajama day at church. School. At, yeah, at school. Sorry. I told him, I said, where's your pants at, boy? You know, come to church in your pajamas. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. Amen. Daddy's gonna fuss at me. I said, "You telling me his nanny told him to wear a suit." I did. I fussed at him. You know, I was murmuring. Amen. I murmured. But we murmur about everything. It's hot. Amen. It's cold. It's it's this one didn't shake my hand. This one didn't do that. We've got all kind of complaints. We complain to God about what He didn't do and how He didn't do this when His plan is a whole lot different from our Amen. plan. Amen. We complain when somebody comes up here to get a healing, they leave and didn't get the healing. Well, what happened? You know what? I don't know what happens, but I tell you what, I know where to go get it when I need something. Amen. You know, Amen. and I'm going to keep on praying and I'm going to keep on seeking him for it. Amen. Amen. Yes. If I know where to go get it, I might not have it, but I know where to go get it. Amen. Why would I not keep going there to get it? Amen. You see what I'm saying? Come on, church. Now, all these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition admonition <laughs> upon whom the ends of the world are come. So he's saying, look, all this happened in the wilderness and we're supposed to learn from this and it's not only supposed to be a learning thing, but it's a warning. Amen. And we need to have some warnings in the church today. Amen. You know, there needs to be warning against sin. Amen. You know, you can't live a double life. You can't call yourself a Christian and live a life full of sin, backslid, and then think you're going to heaven because you are not going to heaven. Amen? Amen. If you're Amen. caught up in any of this stuff, come on, or any other sin, you're not going. And you're not saved. You need to get up here 
and get yourself under the blood. You know, certain denominations, they preach once saved, always saved. And that is not true. Amen. We see it right here. They was all God's children. They were all God's people. They ate the same things. They drank the same thing. Come on. But he wasn't pleased with all of them. Amen. Because they had backslidden on God. They was caught doing things that they shouldn't have done. Amen. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. And that's what he's telling them. He's like, look, y'all are being ignorant. You think you got something when you don't have it. And you need to get yourself to the altar and you need to ask for forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Just when you think you have arrived, that's when God will cut you down. Yeah. Amen. I remember, I remember, and I might have told y'all this before, we went to a church and uh, they, want, they asked me to play the guitar. I was going to sing a song. And, you know, I knew before I got there that I was going to play I told Nanny, I said, I'm going to burn them down tonight, you know. Mm -hmm. Just had that had that haughty spirit, you know, just going in there like, hey, yeah, I'm going I'm to really give it to them tonight. I'm going to tell you what. I got in there, I got my voice was started cracking. <laughs> Come on. The microphone didn't work good. My guitar wouldn't stay in tune. You say, oh, that's just minor stuff. But when you get your, when you get your, you know, when you get your mind on yourself, and not on what God's going to do, or not what what God can do, and you get your mind on what you think you are, God's going to cut you down a notch. Amen. Amen. And, and we always pray, Lord, keep me humble, but you better humble yourself because you don't want God to humble you. That's right. It hurts when He humbles you. It hurts when He chastises you. Why not just walk like we're supposed to walk mm -hmm. instead of getting chastised? Amen. If I would have done what my daddy told me to do, he wouldn't have belted me on the back porch. Amen. And my life would have been a whole lot easier, especially in those moments when I was doing that little dance, you know. <laughs> Come on. Amen. But see, us as church people, we don't listen to what the Lord has told us. And he comes in and we wonder why we're having to do the little dance. Amen. Amen. It's because we didn't listen in the beginning. True. Amen. Amen. We didn't listen. Just hard-headed. Ignorant. <laughs> Come on. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. So it, we know this portion of Scripture really well, right? We've all quoted this one. You know, that the Lord's going to make a way of escape. And you know what? He already has. He already did it on Calvary. He made a way for us on Calvary. But when, when, our, when our heart starts lusting after things and, and all these sins and temptations or whatever it may be start pressing in on us, we don't do what God told us to do. Amen? When's the last time that that temptation rolled up to you and you just got down on your knees and started praying instead of giving in? What if we would open up our word when those things started happening? Right. Amen. Amen? He already give us the tools. He give us the blood. I said he give us the blood. So when the temptation comes, we're supposed to be overcomers by what? By the blood of by the word of our testimony that we love not our lives unto death. Amen? Amen. So when the temptation comes, we already have the victory. We already have it. The victory has already been won. It's already been paid for. All we've got to do is walk in it and pray and seek after God. When you're having a hard time, you start praying. You know, when that thing first, when you first start having that thought that you shouldn't be having and you know it ain't right, that's when you start praying. You don't start thinking on it. Come on. See, see well, that temptation will come and we'll think on it. And, and we got to decide on it. And, it, and, and we'll, we'll linger on it. And then before you know it, we done got curious. Come on. And, and then, you know, it turns into a motive. And then it turns into an action. Amen. Amen. And then by that time, we done, we done, we sin. Amen. Amen. Amen, Brother Orville. Amen. <laughs>
It's wherefore my dearly beloved flee from my adultery. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. Paul's like, look, y'all are smart people. I mean, you believed in Jesus Christ. Come on. Amen. Those that win souls is wise. Amen. Yes. Come on. Amen. And you're trying to do the right things. You, you're wise men, but you just need a little direction. You need a little vision in your life. Amen. And that's what he's telling them there. He's like, judge what I'm saying. You know, mark it down. Take heed to what I'm telling you so you can be blessed. Look at 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. So he's saying, look, the Israelites, they drank of the water. They ate of the bread. They was all one people. Here we are under grace. Come on. We take of the blood. Amen. We break the bread. We take communion together. We're all one people. We're all one body. Why are we doing these things? Amen. How come you can do it and it's not good for me to do it? You see what I'm saying? The same Spirit of God that's living in me ought to be living in you and you should know that this ain't right. That's why we see so much sin in the church because the Spirit of God isn't living in those individuals because they put boundaries on God, on His Word, and on the Spirit. Come on. We put limits on God. Oh, Lord, bless me, but don't touch this part. I need this part. I can't lay this part down. Amen? Amen. Come on. Amen? Amen. And But we're all supposed to be one bread. We're all one body. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar. What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? So here he's going back to what he taught in the last chapter about them eating of flesh that was sacrificed to idols. Amen? And this applies to so much more than just eating meat. Amen? Amen. It applies to a whole lot of things in the churches. And he's saying here, he's like, look, we know that the partakers of the altar, they ate of the things of God in Israel. It says, what I then, the idols is anything which is offered in sacrifice to idols, we know that this idol ain't nothing and he doesn't have the power to make any of what God said was clean, unclean. Amen. So it's no power in the idol. He can't change the food. So that's what he's telling them. He's like, look, I know that and you're smart enough to know that. And then he says, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. So what was happening is the Corinthians, they was going to these feasts, and we learned about this last time, where they were sacrificing things to idols, and they was having these big feasts unto other gods, supposed to be Christians. Amen. Come on. Amen. And they're having idol worship, and then not only are they having idol worship, but the church is going and partaking in these feasts. Amen. Amen. And what Paul is trying to show them is it's not... Unlaw it's not unlawful to eat those things because it ain't no power in it. But when the church is supposed to have a certain look, come on. When the church is supposed to be a certain way, holy. Amen. I said holy. Amen. We're not supposed to be partaking in these things. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? In other words, you ain't going to be a sinner and a saint. You can't do certain things and be for God. Amen? Amen. You can't live your life this way and call it this way on Sunday morning. You can't eat at the devil's table on Saturday night and then on Sunday wake up and feast at God's table. Amen. It doesn't work like that. Amen. We can't drink of the cup of the indignation out here. Come on. 
We can't drink of the cup that's out there. We can't be partakers in the world. We're in the world, not of the world. It's greater is he that is in me that is in the world. Come on. Amen. And he's saying here, he's like, look, y'all been doing this. Number one, y'all are lusting, y'all fornicating, y'all got adultery inside, which it shouldn't even be here in the beginning. And if we would have dealt with that, and we had a, a, a faith like we say we was, instead of walking around being ignorant, thinking that we could do these, we wouldn't have this problem in the first place. Amen? Amen. They wouldn't have had this problem in the first place if they would have left all that junk alone and followed after Jesus Christ. Amen. But see, the church, come on, we don't have faith in the blood. We sit on the pew like there's no power in the blood anymore. Come on. And we keep doing all these other things. Amen. And if we would have just listened to the man of God, if we would have listened to what the Spirit was trying to say, if we would have read our Bible, we wouldn't have been in that predicament in the first place. Amen. Amen. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man and others' wealth. Look, if it looks like sin... I shouldn't be doing it. It says abstain from all appearances of evil is what the Word of God says in 1 Thessalonians. Amen. Amen. Abstain from all appearances of evil. All. All. I said all appearances. And that's what Paul is saying here. He's like, look, just because I ate this meat that was sacrificed to a God, it's, it doesn't have no power. It's not going to send my soul to hell, but it's going to send somebody else. Come on. Because they're going to see me do it it's going to bring a reproach on the church. It's going to bring a reproach on everything that I'm preaching. Come on. Everything that y'all are preaching. And it's going, to, it's going to draw people away. Amen. And that's what the problem is in the church. It's so, I think a statistic, 85%, and it might be even higher now, 85% of ministers in America drink. 85%. 85, y'all. And that was several years ago when I read that statistic. And well, everybody says, well, this is, all things are expedient. They always want to bring up this and bring up that. Why they can do this and they can do that. Amen? But it's not right. If I'm drinking and you're an alcoholic, come on. And I'm supposed to be living my life under God and I was free from all this and I've been set free. How is that going to help an alcoholic put it down and live his life for Jesus if he thinks it's okay? Amen. And there's so many things going on in the church like that. That's why the outside don't come on the inside because we're a bunch of hypocrites. Come on. The church is a bunch of hypocrites and that's what people will tell you. Yeah. If you ask them why they don't come to yeah. church, you know what they tell you? Well, you're just going to preach on me for what I'm doing, and then you're going to walk out in the parking lot and do the same things that I've been doing and say you're going to heaven and I'm going to hell. And that's the mentality outside. Amen? And that was the mentality right here. Amen? Amen? They were doing certain things that they shouldn't have been doing, they shouldn't have been doing, they shouldn't have been doing. Amen? I said they shouldn't have been doing it. And it looked bad on the church. Amen. It looked bad on Paul. It looked bad on Jesus Christ and Amen. the blood that he shed for his people. Amen. 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 And it's the same things happening today. He said, let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. So what if it's all right for me to eat this meat? Amen. Amen. If it's going to hurt you, if it's going to cause you to stumble, if it's going to hurt your salvation... If it's going to make you wonder about the power in the blood of what God's church is, I'm not going to do it. That's what Paul says. So if it even looks like sin, I said if it even looks like sin, if any appearance of evil there at all, we should not be caught up in it. You know, it's funny. I went. My birthday was yesterday. Okay, We went to Kickback Jack's last night. Okay? And I ordered wings and a Pepsi, right? Well, they was having karaoke in there. I didn't even know that they was going to have karaoke. And at 7.30, they started singing karaoke. And my mama and them was with me. And mama was like, you should go up there and sing karaoke. I was like, look, mama. I was like, this is what happened. I'll get up there and start singing karaoke. Amen? 
And then somebody's going to take a picture. Come on. And then somebody else going to share that picture on Facebook. And then, before you know it, the people are going to say, well, look at here. The preacher's down there at Kickback Jack's on a Tuesday night singing karaoke, drinking. Amen? You say, oh, no, ain't nobody going to. Yes, they would. Amen. My good would have been evil spoken of. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And my words would have meant nothing in your face. Come on. I can't preach on you. Well, well come on. That's how that's how it happens. Amen. It's the same thing that was happening here. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if it looks like sin, if it's going to cause my brother to stumble, if it's going to cause a reproach on the church, on Jesus, we should not be doing it. Amen. We shouldn't be doing it. Whatsoever sold in the shambles, that eat asking no question for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. So he's saying when you go to the market, don't worry about it. Pray over it and, and let your conscience be free. For everything of the Lord's, everything of the earth, the Lord has made clean. But if any of them that believe not bid you to a feast and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience sake. So if you do go to a feast, somebody asks you over and you got to go, you know, come on. And they set you something down in front of you. Don't worry about it. Eat it. That's what he's saying. And then look. He says, But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it. And for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? Amen. 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 You see what I'm saying? Do you understand that portion of scripture? He's saying, so when you do go to these feasts, if the man stands up and tells you, hey, this has been sacrificed unto an idol, you got to stand up and make, make, make a stand right there. You say, I'm not going to eat this. I can't eat this because it's been sacrificed unto devils. And he said, don't do it for your conscience. Do it for the man of the house, Amen. for the ones that offered it. Amen. What if we would stand up in the face of the enemy? Amen. Come on. I said, make a stand in the face of the enemy when he pours out his perverted meat on us. Come on. Amen. Hello? Amen. When, when those temptations and stuff come out, when those friends come around, amen, when those family members Tell you how it's going to be. Amen. Come on. That's when we make a stand. Just like right here. See, this is more than just meat. This is more than just meat. I said this is more than just meat. Amen. Amen. We need to make a stand. Not for your sake, but for the one who's, you know, if, if, if certain people would make a stand in those faces that are trying to serve them death, we'd have a different church. Amen. But the church won't stand anymore because we're too worried about who's going to be offended. We don't say nothing. Amen? We don't say nothing. We go through the drive through and they'll get our order messed up. And Abby will be clenching the seat over there because she know I'm going to say something. Amen? I come in here and paid my money. We went to... Uh, Bojangles the other night and I ordered a chicken sandwich with fries and a sweet tea and I want you to know we sat in the drive through 40 minutes 40 minutes we sat there 15 minutes and I was like well we're invested now we was all the way down Lynchburg and uh, we finally get to the window and the lady asked me she said will there be anything else I said no it will not I said, it'd take y'all too long. This is supposed to be fast food. I wasn't rude, but I voiced my opinion. And you should have seen Abby all, don't do it, don't do it, you know. <laughs> and then that little girl got smart with me, you know. She mouthed off. I'm going to be honest with you. She, Well, we're hiring, you know, <laughs> like, Lord have mercy. And and I told her what I felt, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. I'll, I'll let her know exactly what was on my mind. Got down the road, didn't have no fries in the bag. Come on. Had unsweet tea. 
and then give us any utensils to eat mashed potatoes with in the car. <laughs> now, I done waited 40 minutes. Amen? Amen. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> and, and we're supposed to sit down and take it, and then if you say something to the world, they going to mouth off at you when they're in the wrong and can't get it right in the first place. Amen. And that's how the church is. We come in, and the world is telling us and dictating yeah. us and serving us all the wrong things, we don't never say anything about it. We just let it slide and we get on down the road and we're complaining about the mess that we're in. Amen. Amen. Because we wouldn't make a stand in the beginning That's right. as Amen. the church. Amen. Amen. God help us. Amen. I'm gonna keep on I'm gonna keep on moving here. <laughs> Wherefore, therefore, ye eat or drink. Ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Amen. Whatever we do, we do it unto God. If we eat, Amen. eat unto God. If we drinking, drink unto God. Amen. Amen. Now, how can we be a partakers of the world and it be unto God? It ain't going to happen. And it says, follow peace with all men. Amen. Amen. He was a Gentile to the Gentiles. He was a Jew to the Jew. Come on. He was a, a church goer to the church goers. Amen. Amen. Come on. So that's what we're supposed to be. And if it looks bad and we're letting it come in and it looks bad on any of these parts, if it looks bad on the church, if it looks bad on the ministry, we shouldn't be doing it. Amen. 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 That was That was fun. That's like sometimes I hear something say share, and I say, wait, Susan ain't going to like it, and I just want you to share it. That's right. We need to, we need to watch listen, our listen, walk. Like you to Susan. It's a testimony. It's a Amen. testimony that we're guarding. you got to guard God. your testimony. Amen. you got to guard your mouth. you got to guard Amen. your words, Amen. your walk, yes. your voice. I mean, everything that pertains to you because people are watching. Amen. And we need to know we can't walk around doing anything that we want to do. You know, we have to live a holy and a separated life. That's what it means to be sanctified. Amen. We're supposed to be sanctified. Amen. Set apart. Praise God from the world. I love you tonight. I appreciate you. Thank you for listening to me. And uh, I'm, I'm just glad Susan let me teach. Amen. I love you all night. I'm going to dismiss this in prayer. Lord, I ask that you would bless the people, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you would touch each and every family that's represented in this place, Lord. I ask that you would move on us, and if it be any sin in our hearts, if it be any sin in our house, if it be any sin or anything that doesn't look good, Lord, that we would shed that thing, that we would, that we would crucify that thing tonight, and we would leave it alone. Lord, for your kingdom and for your glory and for your name's sake, not for our sake, not for our conscience, but for the ones around us. Lord, if it looks like sin, let us stay away from it. Lord, let us abstain from all appearances of evil. And I ask, Lord God, that you would put a desire in our heart to know who you are, to read your word, and to pray fervently. Lord, I thank you for that. I ask that you would bless the pastor. And I ask, Lord God, that you would bless the families that are sick in this church and the ones that need it, Lord. You know who they are. I ask that you would reach down, that you would bless them in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.